Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I'll be answering the question, what is the disease model of addiction? Now, whenever you talk about what causes or maintains an addiction, it's a bit of a controversial topic. There are a lot of different opinions out there on addiction and how it works. The disease model is just one theory, but it's a theory that I think makes a lot of sense based on what we know about how addictions work. It doesn't explain every case of addiction, and it doesn't explain every recovery, but overall I think it does make sense. So if you look at the disease model of addiction, what it's really saying is that just like a medical illness, a substance use disorder takes hold, and at some point the individual who has the condition loses a great deal of control over whether or not they continue to use substances. Now, initially when hearing that, a lot of people may think, well, where's the personal responsibility? Where's the ownership of behavior? Where's the accountability? And how does willpower play? Well, the disease model doesn't say that none of those factors are important. What the disease model addiction says instead is that particularly for moderate and severe cases of substance use disorder, this idea that it is a chronic, long-lasting illness works better to conceptualize what's going on and to find treatments that work. It doesn't say that motivation or willpower don't play a role. It doesn't say there's no accountability or personal responsibility. Of course, those things exist with any situation. A person can have a medical condition and they can follow the treatment and you know, participate in the treatment and take medications as prescribed and see their physician as they're supposed to, or they might not. Now, either way, they didn't choose to have the medical condition, but there are helpful and unhelpful ways to respond to that. And that's how the disease model looks at substance use disorders. The disease model looks at these disorders as medical conditions. Individuals don't ask for the condition, but there are healthy and unhealthy, productive and unproductive ways to respond. But how we respond to substance use disorders is only a part of it. There are changes in the brain that take place when substances are used that really do compromise somebody's level of control. And there is a point with some addiction where an individual really has no control. They're going to use if they have an opportunity to use. It does, especially in severe cases, seem to fall outside of that. Now, other models of addiction have alternative explanations. Uh, so there's models that look at relationships in the environment and put more weight on those than this idea of chemical changes in the brain. And these models have an important contribution to the field of treating substance use disorders, but I'm not sure they're as useful for treatment and long-term care. Evidence that supports these other models is oftentimes based on these cases where people use substances, they clearly develop some sort of substance use disorder, and they spontaneously recover. They decide to stop using or other circumstances happen in their life and things change. They just will not use anymore. And it's easy to look at those types of cases and say, well, it's just a decision. But that is a small number of cases. And it's pretty clear that most of those cases are mild substance use disorder. When you get into moderate and severe, you'll find fewer cases where people can just decide one day that they're gonna stop. If it was that easy, a lot of people would stop. A lot of people would simply not use and start the road to recovery. It's not that simple. And I think that's where the disease model comes in. I think that's why it makes a lot of sense. At the same time, of course, I respect the other models of addiction. I think all the models have something useful to offer treatment professionals. I hope you found this description of the disease model to be helpful. Thanks for watching.